Welcome to the Professor Stubois channel and welcome to the continuation of our general chemistry lecture series. Today we're going to be talking about the mole. Well, what the heck's a mole? Well, let's find out. Okay. A mole is a number. Just any old number. Much like a dozen. So we use the term dozen to represent 12. So there's lots of examples where we might use a dozen. We've got a few for you here. A dozen donuts, a dozen eggs dozen kittens that's a good time so <laughs> this word dozen is actually a number and the mole is very similar so we can use this dozen and what we've done is we, we have an e what we call an equality so one dozen is equal to in this case 12 ears of corn they're the same they're the same amount they're equal but they have different units in this, we can use this as a factor to convert units. That's right. So one dozen equals 12 ears of corn. And if we multiply, or you, sorry, if you divide anything by itself, then you will have one. So we can multiply this equality in any calculation that we're doing, and we won't change the actual value of what we're, what we're calculating. It just simply would change the units. So let's look at an example. If a dozen ears of corn retails for $4, okay, that is a factor. $4 equals one dozen ears of corn. So how much would you pay for 150 ears of corn? And we can use the dimensional analysis technique just simply um, by canceling units. That was a pretty factor. tricky factor, that one dozen equals $4. It I, was. You know, that was kind of in... That was kind of hiding in there, but you're Sometimes right. Sometimes we do have some hidden factors, and we're going to teach you how to find those. So we want to start with the, the part of the question that is definitely not a factor. And in this case, it's the 150 years of corn. That's just a count. That's just the amount. So we're going to start with the 150 years. I like to put it over one personally. It doesn't change the number. Um, and it, it just shows me that years is in the numerator. And what I do right away is I write that unit in the denominator of my fraction. So before I wrote the one dozen over 12 years, I just write years because I know I need to cancel that. So I go to my factors. I do have a, a factor that has years. That's the one dozen equals 12 years. I can multiply by the one dozen over 12 years. The years cancel and now I'm at dozen. But we wanted to know how much we'd pay, so I, I need to go further. So I'm going to multiply by another factor, and right away I'm just going to write dozen in the denominator. I, I need to cancel dozen. I look to my factors. I have a factor that goes from dozen to a dollar amount. That's the four dollars equals one dozen. Now you'll notice up above we wrote one dozen over four dollars, and and it's okay. We can we can use these factors. We can write we can write them in either direction. That doesn't matter because they are an equality. It's, they're, they're equal, so um, it doesn't matter which, which way we write it. We need to set it up so that we can cancel our units. This leaves us with the, un the dollar units, and if I did this uh, math, I would, I would go 150 divided by 12, and then I, I would hit equals in my calculator. It's a very simple calculator, and then I would go times 4. Um, there's, there's numerous ways you can multiply fractions. Um, do what works best for you. Numerator, multiply, denominator, divide. Now remember that the scale of chemistry, right? So we were talking about the scale of chemistry early on, and we work with very, very, very large numbers, like numbers of atoms, numbers of molecules, and we also work with very, very small numbers, like the size of those atoms and those molecules. So we need a way that we can work with very, very large and very, very small numbers. And one way that we can work with very large numbers is the mole. So the mole is a number, just like one dozen is is a number so one mole is 6.0221 times 10 to the 23rd whatever it is donuts kittens that'd be a lot of kittens that'd be a lot of donuts that'd be a lot of donuts and this is uh, avogadro's number um, named after the gentleman who came up with it and it is a conversion factor because it is an equality so if we have an equality with different units so this is let's say this was you know donuts we can convert donuts to moles and moles to donuts. It's that easy. It's that easy. Now, how big is the mole? Well, this is just kind of a fun um, way to look at it. And we had a really, um, really smart student one time uh, kind of fact check this for us and, uh, and yes, said it was true. So um, I believe it. Uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to try to check this and let us know. Um, but right. I, we believe this is true. 
All right, so more about the mole. Where did it come from? It is the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. And what, what this does is it makes the masses that are in on the periodic table that are in AMU now into grams. So if we have 12, um, 12 AMU is equal to 12 grams, then anything in AMU on the periodic table is going to be also equal to grams if you have one mole of it. So AMU is for one molecule, atom, that kind of thing. If you have one mole of them, then now it's in grams. So are you saying that we could take our periodic table and um, use the, the mass from the periodic table to determine how much is one mole? Yes. So if you look at your periodic table, and this is, for example, hydrogen. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one. That means the number of protons is up here, but this is the mass, right? This is the average atomic mass. And if we have one atom of hydrogen, the on average, it would equal this in AMU. But it also now, if you have one mole, it's in grams. We have 1.008 grams in one mole of hydrogen. Well, that's fantastic. It's really easy. It's gonna be so easy to get between grams and moles. Right, and we really need to work with grams when we're in the laboratory. We can't work with individual atoms or molecules. I'd love to see like a mole balance, but you'd have to enter in what the compound was. You would, maybe we yeah. should invent that. Yeah. That wouldn't be so bad. It'd be kind of neat. All right, here's an example. So using this Avogadro's number and using this conversion factor, this is what we call Avogadro's number, and this unit can be anything. So we can count anything, the atoms. So if you had five times 10 to the 25th, notice this, five times 10 to the 20th, this um, means the same as five times 10 to the 25th. And you can use either convention is fine. So if we start with that and we want to know how many moles, we start with what we know that's not a factor. And I know that Professor Corey likes to have I this like to, over one. I do like to put that over one. I don't always do it. So if we have atoms in the numerator, we need to cancel atoms in the denominator. So we know that when we, we use this factor, we're going to put this one on the bottom and moles on the top. Remember, we can, we can flip-flop those either way. Whatever you're left with that does not cancel is what you're left with. So that's the moles. And you do want to write those units. Yeah, for sure. And cancel rather than cross multiply. Try not to do that. Want to talk this one? Sure. It's another example. So this one is asking how many molecules in, and we have um, a, a number, a value in moles. And this is 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth. Well, we can use Avogadro's number for that as well. Yep. So it, you know, it's just um, we're going to say that there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole. It doesn't have to be atoms. It, it can be anything. So we're going to start with what isn't a factor here, and it, that's the 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth moles. I'll put that over one. I might um, I might write moles CH4 it, when I did this. You, you don't have to, but. Um, but we if, will as we continue on, because that's more, going to be important. Yeah, but anyway, for this it's fine. So moles cancel. I have moles in the denominator with my factor. And so I simply just multiply the 1.22 times 10 to the negative 5 times the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And I end up with 7.3 times 10 to the 18th molecules. A lot of molecules. A lot of molecules. And it's from a very small amount of moles. Yeah, to the negative fifth. Right, right that's how big the mole is. All right, so go ahead and pause the video so that you can do these for practice. And you're gonna be using these conversion factors. It's really the same thing, but it's just showing you that we can put anything in here, donuts, kittens, molecules, atoms, and try these questions. We'll give you a second to pause it. And here's the answers. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will continue on with the mole in our next episode. All right, stay our tuned. Next video. Bye-bye.